Now, there are different types of pages that you can create within your notebook. Now, one way you can create a new page is just to go to the menu bar and select page. And there you'll see the different types of pages, starting off with a note page. Uh, now we use note pages to create outlines. So this can be referred to as either a note page or an outlining page, a standard writing page that enables us to uh, create text, uh, a Cornell note taking page. Now this is a specialized page template that allows you to use the Cornell uh, method of note taking. And you can find more information about the Cornell note taking scheme over on Wikipedia. Um, there's a to-do page, which is a specialized outlining page, basically, and then that will use a predefined template to generate a to-do page with some clipping services. And again, we'll look at clipping a little bit later in the tutorial. And finally, a divider page. So if you want to create a new tab, create a new divider in your notebook, you can use that option. Uh, the other way to do it, if you have the toolbar switched on, is from the new icon in the toolbar. A new cell, and we'll look at cells when we look at outlining. Um, an outlining page, a writing page, drawing page, and a Cornell page or divider. So let's start off with just a writing page to begin with, and uh, we'll have a look at some of the extra features that are now included in version three. Now you'll notice down here that it's created a new page called Untitled, but it's actually put it after the index, after the multidex. Uh, you can reorganize your pages directly from the contents page. I can just click on that and then just drag it to where I want it. Uh, we'll put it to up there. Now you'll notice that it's not actually indented under my first section. So if I just press tab, and there's my new writing page under my first section. Again, I can rename it from here. And then I can access the page by clicking on the blue button. To create some new text in the page, I just click on the page and start typing. Now, as well as text, all the notebook pages support the inclusion of media files as attachments. And these media files include such things as I have on the desktop, such as a JPEG file, an image file, uh, a sound file, a movie file and a PDF. So let's just start by adding the JPEG file into the notebook page. I just drag that across and we get the info flag, uh, giving me some information. I can press control to create a link. So if I didn't want to add the actual file into the notebook itself, but just link to it somewhere on my hard disk, I can press control. Or if I press shift, I can position the image anywhere on the page, but I'm just going to drop it onto the page as it is. Now, Notebook will give us the option now to add the file for annotation. So it will create a brand new page just with that image on so we can write about it. Or we can select just add the file. So I'm just going to go ahead and add the file into the page. And when we select the attachment, we get this mini menu. So we can do such things as rotate the image. We can align the image, uh, switch on anti-aliasing and also go to the inspector. So let's go to the inspector. And here we go, this is the attachment inspector. Now within the attachment inspector, there's lots more options. We can do things such as view as a file icon. Now this is useful if you do publish your notebook as a web page, in that rather than displaying the images or displaying the file attachments, uh, you can display them as file icons and that allows people to actually download them from the web page. You can improve some images by switching on anti-alias. We've got alignment controls, so we can specify left alignment or right alignment. Uh, we can also specify rotation and flip, so we can flip the image or we can rotate it using this control. Uh, there's also a scaling control, so we can change the size. Put that back up to about there. And then options to control the border, so we can put a line around the border. We can give it a photo edge by default, but if we remove that, we remove the white margin around the edge of the image. And also we have a drop shadow that we can switch on or switch off. Now, if you have a photorealistic image, or in fact a photo, you can also select corners. So uh, if you have a, a number of photos you want to frame nicely, you can use these black or gold corners, but we'll stick with none. And we'll just rescale that back down. Now, some of the other media types, we have sound files that we can just drag across. And I'll just drop that on the page. Now these are embeddable and you can play them directly from the page itself. iPod Nano is the world's most popular music player. And with an all new aluminum. Also, we have movie files. Again, just drag them straight onto the page. And these are playable from the notebook page itself. iPod Nano is the world's most popular music player. And with an all new aluminum design. And finally, we have PDFs. So if I just drop this PDF directly onto the page. Now, this is a PDF of a web page. So if I select that and let's just scale it down. 
I have the same sorts of controls. So for instance, I can save it as a file icon if I want it to be a downloadable item in a web page. Um, I can also position and just rotation and scaling. I can put a line around it, uh, photo edge and drop shadow. But also because this is a multiple page PDF, I can select which page, this is a two page PDF, which page I want to actually be represented as it's displayed on the screen. So they're the basic media types that you can drag directly into a notebook page. Let me just tidy up this page and we'll have a look at the brand new elements that you can now include on your notebook pages.